So South Korea became the first country in the world to hold a nationwide election in this COVID-19 pandemic era. What are the implications here? Yeah, I think that they're sending a very strong message, clear message to the world. And it's like the pandemic crisis can be an opportunity for some political leaders. And I think it depends, I think it really depends, the question depends on the degree of public trust you know, about the government, how mm -hmm. much you trust it. Sure. And for, uh, throughout the pandemic, I mean, the crisis management, you know, uh, have shown by the Korean government, I think the general public has, you know, they have kind of built on their public, I mean, the trust, public trust on the government, you know, the man handling of a situation. I think that's the issue. It's, the, it's not the issue about whether you should postpone the election or not. It's more Im important whether you, the government can get, obtain the public trust. Enough issue, trust right. yeah. to go ahead with such a massive event yeah. of such kind. Now, Morgan, another point to note is that the electoral bill um, has been revised last year, which led to many firsts this election season. Well, with the passage of the bill late last December, um, the, for the first time in history, uh, the number, the legal voting age in South Korea has been changed from 19 to 18. And with this, some, some 548,000 additional voters, mostly high school students, have been able to cast their ballots in this election. Also, the way in which the 47 proportional representation seats are distributed have changed. A 50% mixed member proportional representation system has been introduced with aims to diversify Korea's National Assembly, which has been dominated by the two largest parties. Well, it's a bit complicated, but just to give you a recap, the previous system reflected a party's voter turnout in relation to the 47 PR seats. But with the new system, only 17 out of the 47 seats will follow the existing system, and the remaining 30 seats will be distributed by taking the percentage of the PR votes won, then subtracting the number of local seats won, and that remaining number is then divided by two. This new system prompted the larger parties to create the so-called satellite parties and only put forward candidates that only put forward candidates for the PR seats, allowing them to grab even more seats in the National Assembly. It also led the launch of other parties so that the total total of 35 parties competed for the PR seats this time, making this year's ballot paper more than 48 centimeters long, the longest proportional representation ballot in Korean history. Right, the longest uh, ballot paper and the most complicated system I've ever seen so far. Now, Professor Ahn, are there key questions or factors that you're looking at uh, as an indicator of how things will unfold throughout uh, tonight or the early morning hours of tomorrow? I think the or big, today, I should yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. big issue is that whether, I mean, we estimate that about 153 seats will be to go for the Democratic Party, but we have to see how many seats they actually get in last. But assuming that they will get, that's true, if, we, if we they get outright majority on National Assembly, that means that it will provide the President Moon had a great booster for him to push forward with a uh, political agenda, such as the you know, judicial reform. Uh, so uh, the question is that whether the, the you know, Democratic Party can get outright majority, or, or if not, they have to get ally with other, you know, satellite or other parties, right? That's the issues. Mm -hmm. Now, how will tonight's result impact uh, the, the country's state of affairs post to general election? Yeah, I think that there's, um, I, actually I have a concern because it's a great news for the uh, President Moon's party, you know, and his, uh, you know, supporters. But however, if you look at a big picture, uh, it's an increasing degree of political polarization in Korean Peninsula, like East versus West. So you see that the map, the political map, is very serious about red and, you know, red and red, uh, blue and red, you know, very the countries. The divide. Yeah, that's very concerning because I think that the one of the reasons have, we have a recent amendment to the election law was try to get, you know, try, decrease the impact, I mean, the level of the bipartisan control, you know, two major party controlling, but it doesn't, it didn't turn out. And then the big parties using satellite, create a satellite party, which kind of, you know, bypass, you know, that, uh, you, know, po you know, political system, you know, you know. So I think that's kind of a concern as a big picture. Uh, I think there's things we have to talk about after the election. Initially, that system was introduced to give more of the smaller parties right. uh, more seats in mm -hmm. the assembly, but that didn't turn out too, too well, yeah. did it? Actually, I was surprised. I went to the voting today, and there's about number 37, right, the parties, but excluding the first two parties. So they didn't actually put their candidate for proportional the candidate, right? So what happened was that they have 37, right? So it's very confusing. But still, I, because that the, under the current uh, new system, right, if you have uh, kind of a certain number, greater number of the local constituent uh, victory, the will decrease number, total number of your seat, 
in the congressional seats. So that's why they come using, you know, getting smarter, or we can, you know, bypass system, create a satellite, you know, party, so that we can get both, both winning situations. Well, thanks to the system, Mugyan, um, the ballot papers for the PR seats, uh, they have to be hand counted. Now, and that's why we're expecting the results to come out much later than uh, previous elections. When do we expect them? Well, the National Election Commission says the outline of which party would get the local seats, how many parties, uh, how many how many seats will a party win, will be out at 2 a.m. But the vote count is expected to be completed by 4 a.m. on Thursday. Counting for votes for the proportional representation seats will likely be finished by 8 a.m. due to the extraordinary long ballot paper. The final results of the distribution of PR seats will take even longer to be released because of the new calculation method based on the new proportional representation system. The final results are expected to be announced on Thursday afternoon. So we'll uh, get those results then. Now, Professor Ahn, um, uh, I'd like your um, impression of this entire election results for today. Well, you know, as I exp uh, explained earlier today, I, w I was kind of expecting a victory for the uh, Democratic Party. But I think it's much big, I mean, bigger victory than I expected. But we're still, still counting, right? We have to wait and see what happened. But I think that we'll give you know, you know, uh, another opportunity for President Moon to push forward with his you know, initiative. I think that's the good news because that he has some hard time with the National Assembly approval, I mean, the endorsement about the any, many agendas. So I guess that's great news for President Moon. But I hope we can come, you know, come together to you know, improve the system, you know, the, the way the election system in the future. Well, uh, still a bit too early to tell as there are hotly contested areas, but we'll wait and see how the results flow in. Um, uh, thank you, Mogyan, our political correspondent, for this uh, wonderful election night coverage, and Anjin Sung, visiting professor at Yonsei University Graduate School of International Studies. Thank you so much. Right, thank you. Thank you.